Sayonara, everyone. Sayonara and greetings from the world of Asia. Um, I'm going to have a little sort of, I'm going to try this because I do know a little bit of Japanese. So I'm going to try this for all the people in the comments. Rebapuru um, yokoso endo kazu eyaru. Does anyone in the comments know what I just said? Well, you probably won't. But I've just welcomed our new signing to Liverpool Football Club. Um, I think this one is pretty much done. It is Wakaru Hendo. Um, again, this ITK, Mr. Chip, Waffle Chip, Blue Chip, whatever you want to call it, Crap Chip, Rat Chip, um, had no clue whatsoever. Um, some may have got um, intel about this Japanese uh, player, but yeah. Um, sayonara, Gene, sayonara. Um, what a day, what a day. Obviously joined by Sarib. Asim is on his way. He, I, I think he had a bit of diarrhea, but he is on his way. Um, he's just cleaning himself up. But... Um, Guys, uh, from Dukore to Sofia and Amrabat, um, the Humpty Dumpty, and then to uh, Wataru uh, Hendo coming in. Gene, your thoughts on the impending transfer? Um, I know you've done a bit of research on him uh, in the last sort of two minutes on YouTube. Um, your thoughts on the player? Look, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. You're making me laugh already before I've even started the show. Look, let's face the music, Avi. It wasn't... Um... It wasn't a deal that we were sort of expecting to take place, sort of thing. And, and like you mentioned, he was. He, I think a couple, even a couple hours before that, we were seeing Amrabat, you know, being all, you know, being on. Basically, he was the name that was being touted around all over Twitter, saying, you know, we would back in for him, all that sort. Of and thing. there was uproar with Amrabat, wasn't there, throughout the well, in the last sort of couple of hours? There was uproar with him. Yeah, and this is the thing. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, it's like a Liverpool. It it it's, it feels like it's a Liverpool type of deal, doesn't it? One out of the blue. You know, something that you want sort of, um, you know, you weren't sort of expecting, let's say, and then all of a sudden, you know, here we go sort of thing. And the man's on his way to for the med medical. <laughs> In terms of the actual player, I mean, I'll be honest with you, two hours ago, I didn't know who the hell he was. Can you Never pronounce his name? Can you pronounce his name, Gene? Endo. Endo, yeah. No, no, his first name. Endo, man. I know him as Endo. I remember him, I remember him from the World Cup. I actually do actually remember his name from the World Cup. I'm watching a few games. He was the captain. He was the captain of the Japanese team as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I, I thought you know it, it rang a bell. But I didn't. I'm not going to sit here and say I knew anything about him or knew how old he was or anything like that. But Javi, it's just a. It's a again. It's a, a. It's a bit of a difficult one because you look and you think, 30 years old, definitely not in the the age bracket that Liverpool look for. A, look for in a player sort of thing. And you know, to be fair, I, I spent the last hour, hour and a half YouTubing the lad. Um, to see, you know, what he, what he is, how good he is, all that sort of thing, and he looks like a good, good little player. Let's say, you know, not, and from what I've seen, and that's only been in two hours of YouTube in the kid, but you know, he's a captain of, of Japan, captain of Stuttgart. Seems like you know he's he's a sort of leader that you know we sort of do lack because we lost Hendo and and, and um, Milner. But look, I think it's gonna what it's gonna boil down to is if this what type of signing this guy is. If is this is just a um, a squad sort of signing where we, you you know we we're here to pick up the sort of numbers. He's a captain. He's he's doing well. And Schmatt, you know, Schmatteke believes he's the one that's gonna you know come in and sort of play a role where you know he's, if you look at his stats where he's previously started, he, he's played a lot of games at centre back. So you know he'll hopefully cover that sort of area as well. And he's played the DM role and he looks like a bit of an it looks like an aggressive type of player um, and something that something that we do lack. But make no mistake, this is not a player that we were, let's say, Liverpool Football Club were, um, were linked to, let's say, two or three months ago when the when the season started. And I think that's just goes to show where Liverpool Football Club is, where it is, where it's at, sorry, Avi, in terms of this transfer window. It's it's not a player that we were looking at all of a sudden because, because we find ourselves in this crazy predicament in terms of transfers and where we're at with two and two, let's say, just over two weeks to go. That you know, we have we have to sort of take chances, and and th and this is a chance that we've taken, and this is the a chance that the club have taken. Fair play, okay. It's a player. It's here, and hopefully it'll be a good one. But that's about it. There's a lot more work that needs to be done, sort of thing. But yep, Sarab, I'll come to you. Uh, so I I obviously work in sort of like with Asian clients and stuff, and especially from Japan. Um, that's why everyone who knows my Twitter, I've always had an affiliation with Japan. Taki Minamino when he was when he was signed as well from Salzburg. I asked um and legit, I asked my uh, I asked two of my friends today what they thought of uh, Wakaru Rendu, and uh, Sarab they said he's a work workhorseman like player. He's got an engine on him. He will run. 
He will relish, he's passionate, um, and he will never let you down. Those six traits that the player reminded me of, and I know the Rowan Doans get the, um, and the Kubas and the Nakumaras of Celtics and the Celtic trio get more of the plaudits, but this player reminds me of a certain James Milner um, from the traits. I've seen a little bit of clips of him more today. He was the captain of the World Cup, had a good World Cup mind. Um, his possessive stats are pretty impressive. His duels, not so bad. Um, he's a bit of everything player, Sadib. Reminds me of a James Milner. It is relatively, people are saying, oh, it's 16 million pounds and whatnot. But 16 million pounds now is at the 7 million pound signings now. With the inflation and with the way prices have just been overinflated this summer and last summer. Um, you know, I think it's a good signing. It's not the main sign. I hope it's not the main signing of a DM of what we need, but it's a steady Eddie signing. And we need that because he provides versatility. And my, one of my big traits at the beginning of the summer, one of my big words were, was the summer of versatility. Sarab, your thoughts, not sure how much research you've done in the past hour. I know you had a space, um, but your thoughts on Wakuru Endo. For me, and I think I speak for quite a few Liverpool fans, it's been a very under underwhelming summer for, for, for us. And I think you two voiced that same opinion. I think because we've had the riches of Caicedo, Lavia, et cetera, et cetera, we, this is such an underwhelming kind of signing that we expected the highs of highs and we're not really getting that kind of target. So I think there's also going to be a lot of negativity around the signing of signing. Um, um, so like for me, it's about... He, the key word you say is versatility and obviously he's 30 years old which is completely against the model of what Liverpool would like to do Endo I, I have not personally seen a lot of him but the key word you mentioned is versatility he's a player that can play centre defensive midfield centre midfield and centre back which covers three positions that we have been lacking for 18 months I'd say so that that alone may prove to be worth in the in in in, in the long run so 16 million is peanuts for a club of Liverpool's size and any team that's competing at the higher ends of the Premier League in the European scene. So that's key for me. And losing uh, Jordan Henderson and James Milner, which are two players Klopp wanted to keep at the club this summer because there were many reports suggesting that Klopp was not keen on selling, getting rid of both of them. So bringing someone in with the experience of, of Endo could could be pivotal for the younger players, the Elliots, your Jones, your Bajetic, mm. similar to what Fabinho was supposed to do for, for Lavio and Bajetic. So I uh, for me, I've not seen too much of the player, but for those characteristics alone, I think it could be, it could be good for the squad morale. It could be good for the for the squad in general as an option. My concern now is that if he's our first signing, there's going to be a lot of distress among the supporters because I, I think if we signed a big name, centre defensive midfield player, centre midfield, and we signed him alongside that, I think there would be a lot less stress because we've got that big money, solid defensive midfield player. And I think there's a lot of scrutiny around Endo already because he's the only kind of player we are notably being linked with and signed. So, and my, my main concern is that's one homegrown spot gone out of two. And that that's it. It's two enough, potentially. Are we going to look for a player in England that's English, homegrown, potentially? But let's see. I'm not. I'm not awfully against it. Gene, would there be uh, would there be so much uproar, right? If it was a Michael Edwards signing, yes, he's the wrong side of thirty and whatnot, right? But would we have so much uproar if this was a Michael Edwards signing? Is there up? Is there more uproar? And there, there has been some really terrible comments. Um, you know the. the the guy has just been linked with the club. He wants to join. Who wouldn't, right? Well, let's not say who wouldn't because Lavi and Moises Kaiser have made their feelings clear. But this guy is going to be flying over from Germany. He wants to be, you know, a Liverpool player. And he must be reading these comments. He, he probably might see these comments from like Twitter and stuff, like absolute negativity. But if this was a Michael Edwards signing, would we have? Would there be this much uproar or do we distrust what the analytical and data team have found in this player? Look, you talk about Edwards, you know, would we would we actually be in this situation if, if Edwards was here? Um, you know, I know there was there was there was instances when even when Edwards was here that you know we struggled in that in that centre back sort of area. But generally speaking, Avi, he's I don't have an issue with the signing. I think it's just what you have to understand is the timing and what what we were used to seeing over the last what what the, the work that actually needs to be carried out over this summer. You know, and, and I excited meant it is so underwhelming that because because we were looking at the likes of Lavia and Caicedo and then recently being linked to let's say Decore and you know them top, that that them top of type of players, all of a sudden, bang, we're signing a, a 30-year-old 80 well, 15, 16 million pound player. 
And that's why I think Liverpool, you know, fans especially are going to be like, come on, man. They were so expectations were a lot higher than a 30, 30 year old, 16 million pound Japanese footballer. And look, no, nothing against the footballer here. You know, he might turn out to be a brilliant footballer. And it's just, I think it's the, just the timing. If we'd have bought, let's say, let's say Decore uh, yesterday, and then he came in, we'd be all, re we'd be really, really happy with everything. Saying, you know what, he's a good player. He's all of that. He's fine. He's a player that we need. He's good cover. Thirty-year-old yeah. captain, aggressive, all that sort of thing. And it makes sense. Well, because he's coming first, well, fans are going to, you know, they're, 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 they're basically bashing him and. That, so it is unfair on the actual player because, like you mentioned, it's just probably dream move coming from um, being, being Japanese, playing in Stuttgart, playing at Stuttgart, <sighs> and then coming to Liverpool Football Club. Um, so fair play, but it's still nowhere near enough as to where we need to be. So I'm just waiting to see, look where where we're at over the next over the next week. If we are being linked to the decorators of this world and it gets over the line, we might look back at his signing like like you know, look, United signed Ericsson last season. Um, and then, you know, he had, he had a really, really good six months for him because they picked up an injury. Then he, sorry, he did really, really well for him. So, you know, sometimes you, you do need a bit of experience. You do need a bit of legal leadership. And he does provide that. But we need to actually go and sign the big players, meaning the decorators of this world, where they're going to come in and are going to, they're our number one. If he's not our number one, we all deep down, we all know that. But, but him as a whole, as a signing, I'll take that because we actually do need a bit of a squad that's got a bit of experience. So let's um let's hope that you know we we do a lot more business in the next coming coming fourteen let's fourteen plus days and and so we can carry on. Avi, I can't hear you. You can't hear me because he's having tea. I don't know what you're having tea for. You know we're on a show. Let's just concentrate. Try to concentrate on the show, please. Yeah, and you're having tea. The same time, if I, if I you don't see me with a pint of beer or anything, you know, on the show. Let's, let's be a bit, you know, courteous. Sayonara, Asim. Sayonara. How are you? Goodbye. What you on about? Sayonara. Oh, Konnichiwa. 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 Sorry. <laughs> my bad was. <laughs> my bad was. Hi, no, this is why. This is why. I thought, you host. No, this, you know is, this, this is why. You know when you host. Is, you know when you host, you're supposed to do a bit of research, and clearly you have done no research in Japanese or this new kid that we're buying. Oh, yeah. Come on, Manavi. Listen, listen, I can get away with it. Okay. Anyway, welcome. Um, I know I'm hosting today, so please stay in your lane today, Asim. Welcome, Asim. Uh, I've got these two thoughts about um Hendo. They're not overly excited. Um, I don't know why, because his stats uh he actually has more. He has, his stats actually come uh, better than Moses Caicedo mm. and Romeo Lavi's of last season. Hey, yes. I'm just, listen, if, Twitter has been all about data this year, okay, this summer. I'm just giving you the data, okay? Statistically, he performs better than the two mentioned. Asim, um, we started off with Decore, a little bit of hope in the morning. Um, before I went to bed, there was talk of Decore bids going in 75, 80 million. Um, and that's the premium you've got to pay for him now. Yeah. Then in the last few hours, uh, Sophia and Amrabat, which me and you had a nice little chuckle about on the phone. And then... Um, Wataru Hendo or Endo, however you want to pronounce it. Um, know much of the player, Asim? Um, no, no, obviously, I knew I, I, I heard my uh, sort of uh, colleague Gene at the bottom say he heard of him, but I'll be lying as well if I knew anything about him. Um, uh, did he captain a Japanese a Japan in the World Cup? Uh, correct me he if I'm wrong. He's captain, he's captain of the Japan, okay. yeah. Uh, and but the thing is, the journalists from Germany actually rave about him and they say this guy's a good player. You might know not, he might not be a household name, but look, we have to cover every single thing. I know we're going to hype him up, we're going to sort of justify him, and that's our sort of um, you know, and that's oh, that's what we do as fans. Some will is going to, some are going to slate him, but look, look, let's judge him when he comes and puts a red shirt on, and then we can judge him as a player. Uh, but what is worrying and what's probably sort of hyped up the fan base is. If this guy was the second or the third signing, it'd be a lot more understandable. But at the moment, what's what happened in the last week or so, you can think, you know what, what the hell's going on? And I understand that sort of frustration straight away. And I think, I think people, once, once they start sort of calming down, maybe uh, a decore comes through the door as well. And then you can think, you know what, we understood this deal. We have to remember how many players we let out through the door. Henderson, Fabinho, forget them uh, about them for a second because we, they weren't supposed to go, if you like. Uh, but Ox and Nabi and uh, and Milner as well, and so we needed some bodied we bodies. We needed some experience. We needed some guy as a focal point in the midfield to sort of provide that energy. Um, and this kid, well, I call him a kid. He's thirty years old. I he's think thirty he's years old. We, we know how much research you've done when you're calling a thirty year old a kid. As in, please, 
I'm, no, well, I, I'm a lot. It's a kid to me. He's a kid to me. But um, well, yeah, I know you're a kid to the ITK business. But you know, anyway, this is different. But anyway, <laughs> swiftly moving on. Swiftly what a great, what a great punchline there from Asim. Listen, Asim, no, it's, we're, we're not Why moving you, swiftly well, on. Finish. I'm the host. I'm the host. I'm the boss today. So it's, it's, it's well, my shot today. Yeah? No, no, we're not moving swiftly. You said moving swiftly on. I've got another question to ask. Um, <laughs> okay, and, my, and my next question is, and people have said in the comments, why isn't there uproar today? It doesn't need to be any uproar today. We have let our feelings known about the ownership. And I have a feeling that this is just a starter to the main course in terms of, I, I, I think, you know, come on. Let's not kid ourselves. There's going to be a a, a, a bigger, better player that's yeah. coming in. Um, it's a, more, a player it's more that's the, going to be in that seventy eight million. More the million. rather than the starter. <laughs> <laughs> Popperdom, <laughs> as long as it's chutney with the Popperdom, something good. Well, there's, there's plenty of spice in Twitter at the moment. <laughs> as in one key trait is, and I was talking to a uh, a guy who's a big support. You know, he's, he's Japanese. Obviously, follows the national team. He said this player, and I said to Sarah. And we've talked about this word as well, Asim. Um, I have trademarked it. Summer of versatility. This guy can cover at right back. He's had a stint, even though he's 5'10", 5, 5'11". 5, he's had a stint at centre-back. Not just a stint. He's played at centre-back for like a couple of seasons. Of you know, a lot of good words are coming out from Stuttgart and German uh, journalist Jan, uh, Jan Har um, Fjortoft, uh, the journalist who reports from mm -hmm. Germany, has spoken well about the player. Asim, is he just another sort of Milner-type player that comes in yeah. for three... Two, three, three years, maybe two, three years, and just is that squad feel like dependable? Is that what we're looking for? Hundred percent, especially if we're. I've been all uh, saying it all along. Although we might see subtle changes in system and and setups as well, if we're all in and we have to go by preseason because that is a, a normally a good sign to go by, where we're all in this system, Avi, and we need players who can play in different positions. And I quickly, when I did the, the graphic on Twitter early, because people were saying, you need to get it out because this guy's on his way. Um, I think is 18% of his career has been at centre-back. Uh, and he's played at right-back as well, uh, and generally in the middle. So if he's played there around about 18% of his career, then surely that tells me he's a leader, he can see the game in front of him. And then he's made that progression, he's made that development to play on the halfway line. And I think, look, Liverpool have got a lot of games in the, hopefully in the Europa League. And if he can be a, a leader on Thursday nights and really give the manager a headache, um, because we need those options. So I don't want to see Henderson, uh, not Henderson, bloody hell, I know he's, we've got Hendo, but uh, I don't want to see Thiago and McAllister, these guys sort of players play on a Thursday night. Because like I was saying earlier, that the amount of players and the amount of bodies that have left Liverpool you know, I don't want that pressure um, on us on a, a Saturday or a Sunday. So we definitely need him. Maybe we I, we all said we might buy three. You never know. This guy might be the third signing. And is ironically, what we've seen over the last week or so, guys, is this is the exact thing that Liverpool have been renowned for. You know, nobody has known, nobody has even reported this guy. And then bang, within a few hours... Liverpool have signed the player. This is what Liverpool do, despite what quality of type of quality or um, you know the player is. Let's put that to a side for a second in terms of business. And I think Shamatka obviously tried to go for with the the sort of uh, the blessing of uh, Klopp in and hijack certain deals. Lavia obviously you know in terms of value was a, something something separate. But I think we've we've tried those sort of big signings and he thought you know what. We need to get some bodies in now. And they've just basically gone and what they knew. Schmatke has obviously used his German links uh, and he's a player obviously known to him. And we've just pressed the button on him. 19 million uh, euros might be a bit steep. But like you were saying, Avi, is everywhere we go, whether it's a utility uh, player, whether it's a big statement player, Liverpool need to be prepared yeah, to pay a costs, premium. Yeah. We have to yeah. pay a premium now, wherever we go. So if we paid about extra 5 million on this guy... Well, look, so be it. But make sure, make sure you do not compromise the big kitty because that big kitty is needed for this week and next week. Because when we need to go big, we can't have any compromises. We need to make sure we nail them. Sarah, I'm going to come to you with this question. Um, no, 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 you wait, wait off this. Yeah, let, me, let me read the comments. Let me read the comments. Yeah, so many people, uh, let me read the comments because people are going to say we don't engage enough. Yeah, so please let me. Yeah, this, yeah. Please. Uh, Sandeep Jussi, thank you for um, tuning in um, with the comment here. All for giving him uh, a shot as second DM, but where does this leave us with getting a CB if we get a Decore in midfielder? No centre-back links whatsoever. Sareb, 
um, I'm going to come to you. Um, what are your thoughts on Ducore? I know you had a space. I'm not sure if you covered Ducore in the space, but what are your thoughts of Ducore? And is is that deal possible? You know, uh, Crystal Palace have lost Olise, Zaha. You know, the, the, they had inquiries about Eze earlier on this summer. What's the chances that they let go of another player for 70, 80 million? And surely they'll be looking for replacements before they let him go to us. Um, Decore was not a name that came up in the space, but it's a name that's come up on Liverpool Twitter and Liverpool social media outlets for, for quite a while, especially after the Caicedo news and the Lavian news to Chelsea broke out two days ago now, I believe. So, and judging by the metrics and a very, very good graph uh, by, by Asim himself, um, Decore fits all the metrics for, for Liverpool. He's, um, I don't know the exact numbers from the top of my head, but it looked very, very promising. Obviously, People are always going to compare him to Caicedo because that was the the level we were looking at and the likes of Lavia, etc. For me, this could be one of the best profile players on the market for us. He fits the age profile. The only issue I have is the price, but that's going to happen everywhere we look because we, we, we've we shown our wallet to people now. So people know we have the money. Before, uh, when we were penny pinching for players, fair enough, we could have negotiated a 50, 60 million pound deal. But I would not be surprised if that's easily 80 million pounds. And at this moment in time, we're not in a, we're not in a time to be negotiating. The season has started, and we're in dire need for a six. I think just go and pay the money for Decore by having a by having Endo in as a kind of backup option as well at thirty years old, and having Decore in. I think it could be a fine window for Liverpool in terms of that position. Decore for me looks very very good. I, I've only seen clips, and I've only looked at his stats from from a from a bias point of view. I haven't taken my un, I haven't taken my bias hat off yet, but. I look at the market now, Florentino Louise, Ryan Gravenberch, Kefren Turat, <clears throat> Matt Bone, uh, Czech Ducore. Looks like the one that is looking more and more likely. I know there's been a few hints about Sofi and Amrabat, but we'll, we'll know more in the coming days, whether that's concrete or just a few journalists playing games. But Ducore is a name that's starting to preach more and more and more. And Liverpool are Liverpool tend to always look in within their league. Some of our best signings have come from players within our league, Robertson, Mane, Salah was played Premier League football, Virgil van Dijk. So it's not opposed to Liverpool to go and pick players out from the lesser teams in the Premier League. So that that deal, I think we may get done very, very soon. The only issue is now, if Endo was signed after we signed the Corey, I think there would be less turmoil within the fan base. Yeah, Let's just hope Liverpool pull out their purse. Gene, just coming to you, surely this Hendo... Well, I don't see it as a panic buy. I think they were looking for a player with a bit of experience, like a 30-year-old. I mean, I made a little joke about today in the morning about get re-signing Momo Sosoko, you know, this experience, PL <laughs> experience, and, you know, a steady Eddie. You know, I know we've got Thiago as well, and someone will argue, look, we've got Thiago. Why would we need someone experienced? Thiago isn't fit, unfortunately, you know. A soccer guard saying the Corey is my guy, I need that to happen. You've mentioned so many people that are your guys, so please, yeah, handle yourself. But Gene, just coming back to... um. Hendo, surely there's been a bit of planning on this player. Maybe surely they've looked at his stats and he does meet a few of the criteria that Klopp demands. The running stats, the energy, the, the non-stop running, the pressing. You know, he, he is a Klopp player. He's not the fancy name that we all have been accustomed to or what we've been linked with. But he may just come in and be that, you know, I keep saying it and I don't want to keep repeating his name, but a James Milner type, Gene. You know, looking at it now, if he, it, you know, I... Is, for me personally, it would have been somebody really, really young, let's say an 18, 19 year old Lavia, and let's say to call it, or somebody who's in the 23, 24 year age age bracket who's going to sort of come in. But we've gone for the latter, where we've gone for a 30 year old, and let's say hopefully a Decore at the age of 23. I would actually prefer the elder one. Why? Because we've lost, lost two elder heads, and it actually makes sense. But I will, what I will say is, Avi, this reminds me, you say it's something that we planned for and all that. I It just got, it's got uh, Arthur written all over it. I'll be honest with you. And why? Not because of how Arthur turned out. So you don't out. think he's going to get games then? You, you think no, he's going to be... No, no, no. Uh. What I'm trying to say is the actual... When the signing took place, mm -hmm. it's got that sort of feel to it. Arthur, look, Avi, let's face it, me and you, both last the day of the season, we thought Arthur he was really good at Barcelona. Yes, he was crap at Juventus. We both sat there raving about him saying, you know what? No, I thought he's, he's going to get his fair share of games. Don't I'll put my hands up and say we thought yeah, he's going to get his fair share of games. Same. And so this, is, this has got that sort of Arthur sort of feel to it at the time of signing. But Arthur, we know, just didn't play. Whereas this lad might come in at the, you know, at the right age, come in and play and, and, and do well. Because the talent is there from what we've seen. 
it, it, it just the my only caveat to that is look, he's a thirty year old played at Stuttgart, didn't ever really get a big move and anywhere else. What what was the actual reason behind it? But I'm open I'm open to it as long as the big big names when I say the big names, I mean somebody like a Decore, that sort of type of player coming because that's what we need. This mm. player, yeah, I want a proper destroyer. And as <sighs> I mentioned, he gave us the attributes of um, of Decore, so it makes sense. Decore and him, and I'm happy. I'm not gonna lie to you, boys. I would be happy for a Mar- I would, from a defensive midfield point of view, I'd be happy. But what I will say is, because this kid can play at centre back, do you? And a question to you three: Do you think we'll still sign, go, go 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 and sign a centre back if this kid can play there? I uh, ask if I can take this, please. I don't care about a centre back right now. My priority has got to be as a, a, a DM, a still a prominent DM. And people are saying Badgerich in the comments. Yes, Badgerich is also nineteen. He's had his fair share of injuries. You know, this hip hip abductor injury can be a very niggling one as well. So we've got to manage his time. Asim, well, uh, you could answer Gene's question, but why do I feel it's like a hit and hope approach at the moment? Why do I feel as if this Amrabat, maybe there has been interest to see if the play is available. This mm. Florentina Louise talk, yes, it could just be hot air and the media just linking us up with every Tom, Dick and Harry. But why do yeah. I feel and Decore and stuff that these are all hit and hope approaches that we're just going down this list now. And whoever says yes to us, whoever yeah. we can agree with, a fee with, with the club, <clears throat> will come into uh, will come to Kirby, get his uh, sign unveiled and will be thrown into the deep end. Why do I feel like that? Because of what happened last week, Avi. Because of what happened. When you don't sort of randomly just go for Kaiseido after not really going for him on, in January, then not going for him, uh, even making moves after January when Arsenal went away to rise and then early negotiations started with Chelsea. Not going for him early seemed like Liverpool are just going here and there everywhere trying to hijack a deal. Uh, apparently, they didn't even really know about Sabosleis. But you have to give the club and Schumacher credit for that if they're late... Uh, they were late to the party and about knowing about the the release release clause. Then you have to give them the flowers. But in terms of the list, I know it doesn't seem like Liverpool have one. I, I think that every club, generally speaking, has a a potential uh, sort of um, you know a potential uh, you know what do you call it a list. Then an established list, and then another list where something that they can fall back on. And I think this guy was on that list where they knew the player, Schumacher's links, links in um, in Germany, and the reporters are saying that this guy is a bit of an unsung hero in that team and in that league. He got 439 duels uh, last season. Uh, and I've checked his uh, pro- uh, progression, sorry, possession-adjusted ad- interceptions, and they were very, very good, generally speaking. And that shows me someone who can read the game possession adjusted inter- interceptions so that's obviously given me a bit of hope but let, let's make no mis- mistake about it doesn't matter how much we sort of try to put the icing on the cake on this signing this is simply not good enough we're not saying that this guy should be here and the bread and butter in Liverpool's midfield it shouldn't be we need and we've got bigger fish to fry and we have to nail those targets I cannot sort of you know um you know sort of stress how important it is every single fan Liverpool fan in the world needs knows now what Liverpool need to do. And look, if this guy was supposed to be coming in at the end of the sort of transfer window, that then 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 so be it. But no one would have had an issue, yeah. Sorry, no, no one would have had an issue. No, carry on. I said no one would have had an issue if he was the last player and we would have already got the bodies in that we wanted, the players that we needed. No one would have um, batten. I did. No, I understand that. Exactly. Well, in terms of the six and the right back, and in terms of uh, Chini, if I just quickly may answer his question is, yes, it'll give us, vers- give us versatility. If this guy's can play centre-back, then, you know, we can invert from the centre-back. We can invert from left-back as well because Shimakas and Hot Robertson cannot really do it. And this guy will be very, very comfortable on the ball. He's very, very progressive uh, compared to, you know, you know, like, for example, Decore. But I, I, in terms of our six and even Decore when he comes in, I've been watching a bit of Decore. And although that sort of video that's been doing the rounds on Twitter... Uh, against away to Newcastle and I think there was one for Liverpool as well that sort of gave me hope where Decore is that sort of um, you know still I've been talking to Wiki about it this is what we need a still you know uh, sort of destroyer in midfield they can be sort of very you know um, 
sort of a bit progressive off the ball. They can move around here and there off the ball, depending on where the, the counter press is. But on the ball, we need someone to do a bit more lateral passes, make it a bit boring, if you like. Keep it a bit like, sim- keep, keep keep it a little bit more simpler, right? Compared to like, exactly. like a Zubi Mandy is a bit, you know, he's a bit he can be yeah. a bit more creative, but we just need a six, like you said, like a still six who just like manages the game. And it. looks after his centre back as well. First and foremost, looks back instead of forward. Um, go on, I think we've just got mo- too much movement there, uh, Avi. Too much movement in the middle, and you know, a p- sort of prime Fabinho when he used to sit there and then just wait for the ball to fall loose, and then bang, we go again. And that's what exactly what we need. But I think I'm sure Decore has got those attributes, and under the, under the guidance and coaching of Jurgen Klopp and Pep Linders, uh, if I may say so then he'll just turn into a monster. But look, I'm not going to get excited. I know that, I know that was a, there was a report on the ind- Independent today about linking us to Decore. Let's just wait. I'm not going to do any kit swaps, I promise you. But once he comes, then I'll get excited. Yeah, don't do any graphics because you're the curse this summer with all these predetermined <laughs> graphics like Andrade, Andrade, whatever. Um, guys, 800 in the chat. Uh, sorry, Sad, I'm going to let you go, Sad, but just give me one second. 800 in the chat, guys. Listen. 11 o'clock, you guys are putting some shift in. Not just us guys, but you guys in the comments. Please like and subscribe, guys. We don't ask for nothing else. You can banter me as much as you want. You can talk about Gene's stupid white hat that he wears every day. Have you got no other selection of hats? Come on, Gene. You know, you can talk about Sarum's pretty face, you know, the young guy. And then obviously, the Mr. Ars, who had a bit of diarrhea issues this uh, evening. That's why he was late to the show. Is this guy, is this, so, is this guy is this a guy, host? He's just throwing shots at everybody. You can speak. Sarib, some people are saying spin the bottle. You know, uh, Jorge Shamatke is playing spin the bottle. But you said to us, you said to us, Sarib, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You said to us on Tuesday, no more more signings. Guys, we're going to have one more. Whoever that's going to be is going to be, and that's it. We're going to stop. It's going to be Lavia. Lavia's not been done. Are you still holding on to that thought that we've only got one more, and that was it? Endo's the last one, or you're expecting another two to come in? Or another one to come in? Look, for me, what I said on Tuesday... I wanted to be wrong so bad and I hope I will be wrong because that was me being realistic and knowing how this club functions in the transfer market in the last 18 months or so. That to me, giving a general consensus of what I think will happen, not what I wanted to happen. That's that's the confusion, which I want to clarify now. I do hope Liverpool go and pull out something from from from, from their rab, rab out of the hat, let's say. My, I, I have a question, which you are free to answer as well, Avi. I just, you are the host, but I do have a question. <laughs> Liverpool have two homegrown spots left. One of them is is going. So our main target was obviously not, not Endo. If Liverpool went and pulled out Caicedo and, I don't know, Inacio, for example, that would have completely like derailed our two homegrown spots, gone already. So where is this endo signing that Liverpool have been looking for? Because Anasio is not as experienced and neither is Lavia or Caicedo. So where is that kind of, you know, two homegrown spots gone to? Because we're looking at um, endo as an experienced player and we've been looking in the transfer market. So if the, we only had two homegrown spots left and we got our transfer targets, where was endo in the mix or that extra experienced player? Is that in the... If, if Nat Phillips goes... Does that open up another? Do we have to cover another non H G roll spot, fellas? I'm I'm pretty sure we do, Abby. I think. So if Phillips goes. We've got to fill up another homegrown spot. Is that what we're trying to say? I think so. Yeah, because I need a bit of help here, guys. I, I'm always looking for help when it comes yeah, to homegrown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so why should I help you now? Why I, I get help? sticky. Listen, why should I listen, help you? listen. Uh, the host should only host and ask the questions. But the homegrown spot, no, no, the homegrown rule. I need help with it myself because I get confused by it. He can't be 21. He has to be under yeah, this yeah, or over does. 21. Like, it does get confusing. So, it does, it does. what do we need to cover? Asim, Jean, do you, Jean, are you aware of this homegrown rule? <laughs> and, 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 the, and, and, you, and you've done well to mute yourself because we don't even understand it. Go on. <laughs> Look, Matt Phillips is homegrown, isn't he? So, he's, he counts as a homegrown. So, if he leaves, I'm sure we're going to have to cover one. That's how it works, isn't it? If one goes, you've got to cover it, cover that spot with another homegrown. Asim? Yeah, look, I agree. I agree. I'm not going to lie, Avi. I read a report, a full report on the, the homegrown sort of ruling, and I still didn't get it because you said... You didn't get it because you can't read, for fuck's sake. <laughs> That's why. Glad to yell, Asim. <laughs> you try not reading what? something from a book, you know okay? What? You know what, St- what to stick, to, stick to Mr. Man or something, please. Okay? You, know what to, you know what to do. You know what to do. Everyone's complaining. 
about why we signed this guy. Look, just like you know, Sadib is twitching. What we yeah. need now, even though he's so nearly through the door, what we need is Avi to say it's done deal because then it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, when it comes to people from Asia, the market, market, when it comes, you say, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Well, don't be a dalal, right? Listen, stop. Shanti Rukh today. Today is Shanti show. Please, no ruler today. I'm prepared today. <laughs> no, listen, Sarib, back to your question. You know what, Sarib? In a nutshell, yeah, and I might go off a little bit tangent here, I can't predict anything. There's no point of questioning what this board is doing. I think we know that. Yeah, yeah, from Dakori to Amrabat to Endo coming in, in the space of two and a half, three hours today, guys, yeah, we could safely say. I woke up at nine saying, you know, this Decori bit is not going in. I'm pretty sure, they, you know, they must be talking or something. To Amrabat saying, you know, a, a North, uh, a Netherlands journalist saying, you know, he's close Liverpool. To Endo, Asim, we can't predict Liverpool are doing. And that's, in a way, that's a worry. Yeah. But in a way, it's exciting at the same time. Listen, I'm not saying we need another Hendo type player. We, now we need a accomplished midfielder, a, a six, like, as I'm saying, a still six. But As Asim, we look like fools at the minute. You know, yeah. I, I had a shopping window list at the beginning of the window. I'm zero and five right now. Yeah. Florentino Luis, Puligao, Kone, Puligao, uh, Florentino Luis, Puligao, Kefren Churam, Puligao, Jude Bellingham, Zubi Mundi. I've named every six under the sun. And this club, no, kuch nahi, koi interest nahi hai. Koi <laughs> interest nahi hai. Asim, explain it to me. They've probably got a burner on your account. Whatever name you come out with, forget him. Forget him. Listen, <laughs> Joyce, Joyce called me out already. Anymore. Joyce called me out, rightly so. He called me out, yeah. I look like a mug. I'm going to have it no, written on my forehead. He, Don't called about out, that. he called out amateur scouts, not amateur ITKs. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm everything. I'm everything. I'm, I'm rolling to one. I'm the, I'm the kitchen sink. I was scouting Rodi Sillian. Have you seen his graphs? Oh, yeah. He's, he's doing the graphs. Oh, no, no. He's doing the graphs. He's got pennies on it. 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 Joking aside, Avi, this, and this sort of makes me think what's going to happen with the signing of Andre because Andre was supposed to be a signing for January as well. Are we mm. going to get him? Are we happy with this guy as a sort of a stopgap experienced utility player and then go big with someone like Decore, then are we going to go for Andre as well? Maybe if we have a bit of succession planning... We're falling you know, ourselves short though, Asim. We are. Gene, we're, we are. We're, Gene no. we're falling ourselves short. If we, if no, no, we, no, no, no. If you're trying to tell me... and No, 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 no. I'm just saying... I'm this coming, could, no, no, I'm you're coming. saying it could be a plan. Okay, go. I'm coming. I would only be happy with not getting Andre and getting this lad in, um, Endo and Decore, then I'd want Inacio. Th then I want Inacio. I'd be happy with that. If someone said to me, you got Inacio, this lad, and Decore, after what's happened, I'd have to take it. Would you? Oh, yeah, 100%. You take that right now, man. So you're giving me Hen Endo's in as the versatility, versatility player. And listen, he might not be a midfield. He could be covering for Trent as well, some games, like the Europa League games and the domestic cup games. That's fine. right? We've got 19 games between now till uh, January, Asim. So, you know, 19 games. That you know, it's not a, that much of a big number. We haven't got Champions League. Nine games, you play your first team. But Gene, Asim said that we'll get Endo, we could get Decore, and then in the January, get um, Andre, you said, right? Decore yeah. now with Endo, yeah. and then Andre, but get Nacio now. I don't, that, yeah. Yeah, that symbolizes, I don't, that symbolizes yeah, a good I, window. Oh, Gene? yeah. If, 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 if there's four players you've just mentioned to me, of course, why wouldn't be happy? We've got Andre coming in Jan. We've got um, the the lad now, and then we've got Decore and Inacio. Bloody hell, we'll be jumping for joy if we already got them four players. You're off your rockers. But, but, but then, Sarim, then is mentioning, but Sarim mentioned the homegrown rule. Can we get those four players in without disrupting that homegrown spot? See, again, I'm not educated enough to comment my, on that. My, my point was, Avi, if we get this lad, then it might leave Andre coming next summer. Because I think I, if, I, if, I, if I, Thiago I, goes... Then he yeah. replaces him. I don't think we signed Andre. I'll be honest with you, just by us signing this kid. When I say this kid, I know he's a 30 year old, but again, he's a kid to you. He's a kid to you. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so signing Endo, we ain't getting Andre in Jan. You can put Lija on Andre now because we don't need to go, go and buy it. We like January deals, though, Gene. No, we like January deals. Diaz, January. Gakpo, January. The centre back, man. If, if we're going to buy a Decore and we've got this. Uh, then it's a centre back a priority, not a, another midfielder in Jan. Depends how the, depends how the January sales are as well. That's the, that's Sarib, the like a gap for comes in, then he's gonna buy. Yeah. That, yeah. Sarib, our German journalist, uh, a good friend of ours, Christian Folk, who said uh, you know Jude Bellingham to Liverpool was looking likely um, for the last sort of two years. Um, 
came out with a name today, which is sort of familiar with us. A lot of people um, have mentioned Gra uh, Gravenberch for months and on, and fair play to them. You know, um, he said, Ryan Gravenberch talk has hotted up again, you know, um, is heating up again, rather. Interest in Ryan Gravenberch, Sarib, can he play the DM role? He's been in and out of Bayern Munich, hardly got any game time. Can we take a punt on a 21-year-old and have him as a mainstay as a six? No, I don't think we have the time and the risk to do that. I think if we were, I mean, I mean, you could make a case for yes as well, but for me, no. I think we have the Europa League and stuff, and you would get a lot more game time to say that. Uh, obviously, we're not in the Champions League and we're in a lesser of a competition. Um, so yes, but for me, no. The reason why I say that is because we're trying to win. We're trying to win, regardless of where we are in the league. We're Liverpool Football Club in it. We should be targeting the best of the best not Bayern Munich's bench players. And Bayern Munich have been adamant this whole summer that they, they don't want to sell the player. And I've had enough of Liverpool going for people that don't want to leave the club and don't, the club don't want to sell the player. We have Decore in, in the works. I mean, on, on the, sh the last show, we made a list about who we think will, 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 we will sign three players. And Gravenberch was one I said that could be a wild shout on loan. And talks were starting to heat up again about Gravenberch because with Caicedo, Lavia... Kevin Turam talks dying down early in the window. The Graven Birch talk hasn't really never been settled in the dust. It's always been shut down by Bayern Munich, not our journalists or no one from our side of side of journalism saying, oh, Graven Birch to Liverpool is complete false. And then Christian Fock comes out today and goes, Liverpool are still looking at Graven Birch and Graven Birch is keen on the move. So that could be one to watch. I don't think we have the time to go and take a risk on Graven Birch because he's 21 years old. He hasn't got the experience to play at the highest but level. With players like, but with players like with players like Van Dijk, Gakpo, Pep Linders, Dutch speaking, you know, players and coaches at the club, surely that would help him, no? That that that, that should be an improvement, no? Or well, you know, maybe it, maybe he needs to be in an environment where he's got people like that close to him. You I would know, have taken him alongside another so, so, Jim, twelve Jim, months ago, would you have taken him? To be honest. He, I would he's, always, he's always always been a talented player. He's always been the, the talent is there. The, the talent is there. But the Graven Birch isn't a six. Yeah, exactly. He's, that's that's one point. he's a he's, he's a hybrid. Not a he's a hybrid. I, I, I he's a double pivot personally. He's a progressive. He's a progressive player. He's a progressive. He's a progressive, he's a progressive, he's a progressive player who can do a bit of everything. And look, I, I even so like Taram that we were being earlier in the summer that we were saying like we we want someone like him. And Jurgen Klopp can mould him into a, like a Genie Wijnaldum or a, even a, a lone six because he's got the attributes, the defensive attributes. But, you know, that sort of role, and we were just talking about being, you know, still and less vertical and being a bit, bit more, more uh, being, being a bit more boring, lateral passes, and then waiting, working for those angles as well. That's what we need. We need a guy who can just shield the defence. Van Dijk has been calling for some signings and he's missing some defence um, and protection in front of him, and so is everybody else. Um, can you be molded into a six, Asim? Asim, can you be molded into a six, or has your natural instincts have to be as a defensive minded player? Can it, you be, can a, me, a like, yeah, go you, right now, I, know you could, I, I know what you're saying. For me, there's too much movement in Turam, too much movement in Gravenberch, and too much movement el uh, elsewhere. Ducore, I've been watching him quite closely for a week. I think that guy has got the profile to be that still. Uh, you know, six that we've been craving for the prime Fabinho. That is our benchmark at the moment. When we saw the best of Fabinho, we saw the best of Liverpool, and that's what we need. I'm yeah, not saying these guys are good players, not good players. You, want, you don't, especially right now. You, if you're gonna buy a six, he can't be a progressive six. Let's say he has to be a proper still six. Who's yeah. gonna be? A, who's an actual six? Who's gonna sit there and protect? We can't take any chances of molding anybody right now into a six because yeah. it just doesn't make sense. Because then otherwise we can stick with McAllister there, though, right? One player, flipping player, that's going to be a proper six. That's what, you, and that's a, that's right. That's what we should be doing. Well, that's seventy million, seventy-five million quid, and let's see if these guys pull it out. So with Endo coming, Asim, and it could well be he's just a soul signing um, for the week. Whoa. Soul signing for the week, for the week, for the week, for the week. Yeah, sign it before you pull that trigger. Saburkar, Sabur, please, Sabur. Yeah, we don't want to lose you. Just yet, right? I'm for you, Avi. I put yeah, my yeah. drink down. I put my yeah, drink. Down. Yeah, 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 you better put it down, don't that, mate. I hope that's uh, what is that? Imodium or something? Is that with water? What's going on? 
I'm I'm hooked to, I'm hooked on this at the moment. That settles the stomach I heard. Yeah, Tango does settle the stomach. I hope, I hope Tango you, happy you, with you. You told me off for drinking my chai. You drink. You told me off for drinking my chai, but he can drink a Tango. Because you know what, you you my butcher, little manners, please. Sabar karo. Asim is a little bit older than me. He can do what he wants. It's his channel. Okay, please. Drink whatever you want. Hey, just not alcohol. Yeah, you're all right. Did he get it? It's a rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. He's still learning, Asim. Please, please. Respect. Is it a Is it a cool Toraja? Please. I'm on the post a bit more. Started with Endo. With Endo coming in, could he be thrown in against Bournemouth first game as a six? I don't think we have a choice now. Like, who else are you going to put there? Like, what else is there? I'm not putting McAllister there because that clearly doesn't work. I'm throwing Endo there because we have no choice. Like, who else are you going to play there? Tell me. There's not. We don't have anyone fit and available at this moment in time. Thiago is back in training, but will he be fit to get thrown straight into the game against Bournemouth? It's not in Klopp's model to do so, to put players straight after injury into a team. I, I'd put Endo straight in until someone else gets signed. That may change in the next couple of days if someone else someone else signs. Just how quickly this still uh, travelled through, so uh, we could be something. We could be saying something else in two days or tomorrow, whenever we'll, whenever some breaking news breaks. But at this moment in time, yeah, I throw him in. Yeah, Asim, yeah, Endo, um, straight no. away. No, come on. No, I'm sorry. I, I think we've have got enough. If you told me we were playing away to Newcastle and we needed a bit more of a, not a natural six, because I've not seen enough of this lad, but he's more of a six than McAllister. He's more of a, a ball winner than anyone that we've got at the moment. Bajetic obviously is injured. Um, then I might think about it with a week's training. Then I'll say, okay, just provide a bit of uh, protection in front of the uh, back four. But whoever we play against Bournemouth should be enough. Bloody hell, we won them 9-0 uh, last season. And I'm sure we can, you know, score about three, four goals uh, on Saturday afternoon because, like I said, whether it's Trent playing in there, McAllister playing in there, or anybody else, we should have enough. Curtis might even get a goal um, as the lone six as well. So you never know. But whoever it is, well, then again, thinking about that, if he does have enough time to register him, it might be good to just give him about 30 minutes at the end when we're three, four nil up, hopefully. So to to get him ready for the next game, it all depends on how he comes in, how he impresses the coaching staff. But if you want my prediction, I don't think we see him for at least two three games. A comment from JD: um, Anyone know of Endo's English is any good? Listen, forty five minutes, we didn't even know who the fucking player was. So give us a chance, man, if we know what his English is like. But we'll find out for you definitely. I think Soccer God's been uh, on a scouting mission. I think he said his English is apparently good. Um, <laughs> I'm sure so his, his English is better than your Japanese. I'm gonna everyone's gonna show a graph of how good his English is with these all these dots. Uh, uh, his, English English, uh, uh, his English is better than your Japanese. Oh, you every day. Day. It's a good job uh, that we didn't lose the viewers earlier on. Telling them <laughs> As, I want to address this uh, super chat because um, inevitably it will be about the owners again. Gene, I'm gonna come to you because I know you love talking about the owners. From Rob C, thank you for um, liking and subscribing, and thank you for um, the super chat. Don't need squad players, need first team players. FSG out now. Gene, if Endo was the last player to come in for this window, I don't even want to take that question. I'm giving you that scenario. I'm giving you that scenario. Oh, you've got to answer the scenario. Yeah, on, man, Don't need you know, players. You need first team players. FSG out now. Listen, if 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 Endo is the is the last player, which I I can guarantee you, well, I can't guarantee you anything, especially with our owners. But um, look, he'll just be anarchy. Man. He has to. There's there's no if if but so maybe it's like the the lad said it previously in a few years ago. He has to go. They have to go. If that's the case, Avi, man, I'm I'm not gonna sit here and accept. Um, being shortchanged this year, we've said it for years. This was the summer of change, and and if and if we don't get the change this year, then it's it's, it's going to be hell's going to break loose. You can't b get rid of seven or eight players and replace them with um, a thirty-year-old Japanese player from um, from Stuttgart, who we don't really know. We never heard of two two um, two hours ago. So uh, I that's to be fair, there's no point answering that because I genuinely believe we're going to buy. Uh, and you, you put me in a scenario which I don't think is really going to happen. So. I think we will buy and let's we just let's we just gotta give it till the thirty first. But come thirty first, and if these owners haven't done enough, believe you me, mm -hmm. I'll buy it and I'll be going to going, going to town on them because it's just not 
it's not right and it shouldn't have happened. We've got ourselves in this predicament now and we, we need a way out. And the only way out is, is if you go and spend on the right sort of players that are going to take us hopefully to the next sort of level. And Klopp needs this because he's given these owners everything. And yeah, he's, he's, he's to blame and uh, is at fault for, for some of the things, but primarily the book stops with the owners and they have to pull it out. And and they've sort of, they did sort of show that with Caicedo. So we have to sort of accept that and say, OK, give them the, till the 31st. We know that the money's there. They just have to go and spend it on the players that they want. And if, if this guy is a start, fair play. I'm good. I'm happy to go. Awesome. We've gone into this window with a part-time sporting director who came out of retirement. And, I'm, you know, we've mentioned it again. But is this why we needed a renowned sporting director in the business who's been around European yeah. football, who knows a bit of South American football, who knows the market? Is this what we were dying for? Because I'm sure... I'm sure the 16 million that we've just dropped on this endo, I'm sure we could, if, if 16 million, we need to get a DM. I'm sure there's players out there in South America that could do equally a job. Uh, I hear uh, Fernando Redondo's son, uh, Federico Redondo, you know, I've seen some clips of him. He looks a very tidy player. There's so many, like there's a conveyor belt right now in South America of these defensive midfielders. Alan Barea, I think, has gone to Porto. Ask him, is this why it's pivotal that once this window is shut, we say yeah. goodbye to George, he picks up his P45 and we actually start scouting for a proper sporting director. Or do we even go back, go back to the system, maybe recall Michael Edwin and say, listen, we'll offer you more. Just come back and like, you know, let's go back to what we know best. Yeah, look, uh, I agree. Wherever it is, there needs to be a plan in place. And this is, is reflecting on our transfer policy, isn't it? McAllister came in because obviously Julian Ward was, you know, overseeing uh, that deal and then we were sort of going for release clauses because we didn't do the groundwork there's a word that's not been mentioned before on this channel and uh, that's the problem Avi when you don't have a plan in place you don't have connections and Shamatka whatever he has been he's built those connections but at the moment it's reflecting on our transfer policy if we can't hijack a deal with a release clause or you know come into the deal at the 12th hour then 11th hour I think it is isn't it yeah whatever it is but late on in the deal, um, Liverpool are struggling to do. And then maybe we have to go back to Shamatka's list that this guy is not a journeyman, but 30-year-old, had a bit of a career in Germany. He knows him well. He knows the club well. And he's 30 years old. And maybe this is a dream move for him. But is it a dream move for Liverpool fans? And uh, not a dream for Lou, uh, not a dream room for a uh, dream move for Liverpool fans right now, especially with the what the, the situation has been over the last couple of weeks. But look, it's 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 a must, Avi. I 100% agree with you. We must really, really take this matter seriously. And I think Klopp has a responsibility as well because hopefully he's seen what's happened this summer. And if there's any blame on Klopp this summer in terms of bringing his mate in and not really having a plan, going from one club to another and embarrassing ourselves this summer, then make sh hopefully there are lessons learned Every single part of every every in the club today, whether it's Klopp, whether it's Shamatka, whether it's the owners, and maybe there's a sign why Mr. John Henry came last weekend, but because maybe he thought, you know what, that shit's hit, hitting the fan at the moment. We can't get a deal over the line, and we're embarrassing ourselves. And maybe they just needed to regroup and say, okay, let's get this signing in, and then maybe we would give ourselves a week or so to really go big in the market. As uh, uh, Chinat uh, uh, Asim goes, that Henry was uh, he came in, he, he, he might have come you know to London, Liverpool, obviously, to see what kind of mess we're in. That that last left us in a bigger mess than we fucking could imagine, Chinat. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's gotten worse since he did a 48 eight hour quick trip and boarded the plane back to Boston. That bastard, this was his listen, uncle, by the way, he's calling a dollar. <laughs> I'll call him far worse. Don't worry, but that by the 31st of August, I'll call John Henry far worse. But listen, Gine, um, Asim's, Asim's, just, Asim's just um, perfectly put it, you know, that the planning has been absolutely a disaster, right? Mantis well, comes up with a comment, Gina, and I want you to address this. So we've sold arguably the best DM in the world in Fabinho, who's just who's done at 29, supposedly, and we've signed Hendo at the oh, it's going to be weird saying Endo, but Endo at 30, 31 in Feb for 18 million, who's valued at 6 million. I can't handle this shit. Please, please, how do we uh, calm this mantis? How do we calm the people in the comments? Surely there's some kind of positivity out of this transfer. Fabinho played, 
Fabinho's game. I don't know how many like games this uh, Endo's played in terms of his career, but we all know Fabinho played games that was like I think the the average was for like 30, 40 year old guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
he's he's here now. Um, we don't really have a choice but to support him. Um, but he looks like a good character. He looks like he doesn't cause any dressing room drama. He looks easy. He was the captain of, of, of Stuttgart and the fans hold him in such high regard. He could easily become a cult hero at Liverpool, just like Origi, just like how Dan Lovren was for that Borussia Dortmund goal. It could Christian easily... Poulsen. Christian Poulsen. Christian Yeah. It could easily... It could... <laughs> I, I, I don't even think he was born when Christian Poulsen was around, I think. So I don't think he was a child. Maybe a kid. Look, look, look. He, play, he plays for Liverpool now. I don't really have a choice other to support him. And I will support him. Like I said, he's a Liverpool player. He's signed by our, our manager, our sporting director, whoever it was. Let's just hope there's more to come because if it's just Endo, boy, boy. Jay Kismet, you never walk alone. Hope that's how I've said it, Kismet. Um, we've got very good. I'm in very good Kismet with the three that I'm hosting today. Um, God help me. But anyway, big up. I talked to two of my guys who have season tickets at Stuttgart. They say he's a warrior fighter and is their best player. Gina, it seems as if, look, we've got a steady AD coming to the club. Uh, people, you know, from what you, you, you mentioned and what you did on Twitter, especially uh, the Stuttgart fans, they speak so highly of this player. So, I mean, you can only go by what they've told you because they're the ones who actually watch him week in, week out. And he was a captain of their team. And he seems to have the attributes. As in sport, does his stats, the, the decent stats as well. Um but, you know, and he's, he's an experienced player. You can't really knock what we're seeing. I think, look, again, I mean, we're just being, you know, picky right now because of, of the players that haven't come. Hmm. If they don't, if they do come, we will be happy with the endo signing. As long as, you know, Kings have, this is the end of the window. I, if, as long as it's not the end of the window, we're okay with it. Um, so, and I think, look, I'm, I don't have an, I, I'll be honest, I don't have an issue with the signing at all. He's a good player from what I've seen, from what we're hearing from people. I'm not a, a pro at uh, uh, um, the bun in terms of the watching the Bundesliga, so I don't really know much. But please, just let we know what the level is. We know we need to, you know, there's like I said, mentioned, there's bigger fish to fry. Let's go get the decorers in of this world in, and and then then we can really go again because this was yeah. this is um it is not a stopgap in terms of a six month sort of deal, but it's a few years deal that gives you the experience and and hopefully it'll be somebody that will who who starts more or less straight away in terms of uh, yeah I probably agree I don't think he'll play against Bournemouth but. If a Newcastle game is there and the guy's fit and ready to go, we're going to need a six in that game, a proper one. It mm -hmm. might be a... Um, might need two. <laughs> yeah, but in that game, you know, I can see him starting. Uh, Bournemouth probably not, because I don't. Th I think we've got more, more than enough to put Bournemouth to, to the sword. Uh, but Newcastle, if he's ready, I think he will start. Guys, yeah. that's been just over an hour. Well, an hour for me and Sarban Sata, Gene. Asim was uh, Asim gave us a good forty-five minute stint today. I'm um, actually I, I like these short stints from you, Asim. I think we might have to uh, um, revise <laughs> reprise your role uh, going forward. You know these little cameo roles. I think that's what's best to to you. Anyway, guys, there's been yeah, seven. But, uh, we know. Before you, do, please do not interrupt me. Please don't interrupt me. I'll give you. Please. I'll give you a compliment. I'll give you a compliment. Yeah. You know, I just looked at you. You look a bit like Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Only he does. He does. Like that, please, please. You said that today, yeah. you know. I'm like 40 pounds fucking heavier than Andre as well. Please. No, yeah. just your it's face. I know you got a bit of yeah. extra flab on there, but maybe the comments can tell us. Is that a it's good not shout? Flab, it's called fat. It's not flab, it's called fat. But anyway, guys, listen, this has been a great show. Make sure you guys have liked and subscribed. Um, Jay, don't worry, you are gonna get your wish, my dear friend Jay. Asim will be back as host. Um, that's not my burner, by the way. That's not my burner. That's not my burner. I want to ask the comments for one thing, right? So, guys, we've had Avi as a host. Asim has taken off duties of host today. You guys tell us, do you want Avi as the host or Asim as the host going forward? And you lot, you let's get it. He's, let's got, get really it. He's, got, really He's got half a slough. He's got half a slough in the chat. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Get it in. Get it in, guys. Avi or Asim? Listen, listen, sorry, sorry, no, 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 sorry, that's fine. Everyone will say probably ask him, that's fine. No, no, but no, butter, but butter, but butter, sorry, we're talking about George Matka and his P45. This is the last time you're coming on the show on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> you go away, you go right, you get I'm gonna Hi. drop you like a drop, Henry. I mean, I look what uh, Atika said. Where's that Atika? Where's that Atika? Where's that Atika? <laughs> Listen, I mean, we'll do joint managers, Roy Evans and Jared. Yeah, we'll do joint. I mean, look, we'll do at this. I mean, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? I can read it. Yeah, I mean, they want you, man. They want you, man. Because at the end of the day, these guys have never seen you host. Maybe, maybe we can have a. Maybe we can have a. Um, what do you get? Evans and a, a Gerard Julier. 
both of them sort of uh, given as a yeah we know where that got us didn't they they won the Europa League and that's about it there's only one king in the comments right and it's the kings of anfield right and he says it straight up avi is host i think asim asim actually wants me to uh, be as uh, a host anyway i I don't think asim wants me to uh drop my role as a host so maybe i'll host a little bit more i think think even a blind even a blind squirrel finds a nut here and there don't worry (laughs) you sorry no, no, sorry. I want to give you the mic because the last two, three minutes ever that you're going to get on this channel. So, Aija, Aija, Putter, Aija. You didn't listen to Sarev Spaces. That's where you will find him from now on. That is, I'm not on. Bye bye. We've given him a year. We've given him a taster. Let's learn him out to another channel. Yeah, right, detention, d- detention for Sarev. <laughs> guys, this has been a great show. Make sure you guys have oh, liked and subscribed. Right, it's always right. good to have a laugh. It's always good to be um, part of the jokes. And listen, what I love about this sort of community that we're building at Born and Red, and you know, I'm sure other towns have a great community too, is that look, there's it's all banter, it's all a bit of fun. Yes, we're all down and in the sort of you know dustbins and whatnot about Liverpool and what they're doing, but look, everything will be okay. We stick it together as a community, and look, we look forward to Bournemouth. We'll do a show tomorrow. I'm sure we'll be hearing far more names tomorrow as well, and hopefully, hopefully, we get someone. Uh, the um hopefully we get something one across the line but listen like and subscribe guys this is sayonara i'm officially saying it properly <laughs> sayonara to everyone and we shall see you tomorrow thank you god bless okay, okay.